Hey gang, Zippo. I'll give everybody one guess, and only one, on what we're going to talk about. Did you guess? Have you got it? Yep. Briggs and Stratton. Cast iron. Coils slash magnetos slash magnetrons. I'm going to show some differences. Um, and also uh, explain a couple of uh, things about how one works where another one won't in a particular application so on and so forth so I'm going to start off with the oldest one I'm going to move this one out of the way and I'm going to move this one out of the way by the way family most important thing in the world um, this right here is a Briggs model 23D coil and the 23D coil is uh, pretty unique I'm going to do a quick little side-by-side -side comparison you'll see the coil's orientation is opposite of what uh, the later model con co coil configuration is. And I'm not talking about the metal laminates, I'm talking about the coil itself. This one runs in vertical, this one runs horizontal. Um, also, on the 23D, you notice it has one, two, three legs one two three legs that match the uh, and actually it mounts this way that's your grounding wire um, <clears throat> Briggs and Stratton uh, went from the horseshoe style coil which has a replaceable coil pack to the model 23D the 23D introduced uh, what became pretty much the standard type of coil more or less and uh, one thing about the 23D's is if you've got good laminations but uh, your ohm readings are bad on your coil then you can replace just this coil there's a metal clip right there pop that clip off this thing comes off the coil windings come off put a new coil winding on put the new clip on you have a rebuilt coil just that quick simple and easy so you don't really have to source the entire assembly you only have to source this part um, the Briggs manual does state this part with this as being one but if you do search you will get results that will show just the coil pack so that's the early uh, start of the smaller more compact um, external coils. When I say external, the horseshoe coils were under the flywheel, which made adjusting kind of cumbersome because you had to pop the flywheel off to get any, any adjustments made to set your gap away from your uh, magnet, so on and so forth. Your magnet was actually just on the crankshaft itself. Uh, separate from the flywheel. Flywheel is just a big piece of cast iron. Uh, this introduced the magnet being attached to the flywheel. The magnet would come around, charge, points would open, throw your spark. Uh, Briggs engines don't get timed. Um, you do set your point gaps, but they don't get timed. You do gap your coil away from your flywheel a certain amount. Best way to do it that I have learned is just using a business card. I have a video showing that. Um, this video is going to be a little bit long, a little bit in depth, but hopefully it's going to shed a little bit of light on why uh, we can't just grab a coil and throw it in and have it work. All right. Uh, the polarity of the magnets on the flywheel, the location of the magnets on the flywheel, uh, all, all factor in the length of the magnet. Uh, on the contact because as you can see here this coil is considerably shorter as far as the throw here so the magnet's going to be different also uh, with a magnetron ignition the poles are reversed you'd have a north-south or south-north with this one it'd be the opposite with a magnetron type magnetron is simply a coil that does not need points it has uh, an extra little tab that opens the circuit and allows the charge to throw through using the magnet on the flywheel. I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, there, this is the <clears throat> only serviceable coil in this style of configuration that Briggs makes. 
being able to replace just the coil pack. Now we're going to step on up to the next style of coil. We'll leave that one sort of kind of in the view there and get the wire out of the way. Maybe. Here's number two. This is what every, most everybody sees who has a coil with points uh, attached to the uh, side cover or to the side of their engine um, underneath the carburetor just to the left. Uh, standard coil. What happens with these most times, your epoxy may go bad. Um, mice. Let me show you some mice. I think I brought one that had mice marks. Is it this one? Yeah. Mice will chew through your insulation and this will cause a breach in the circuit if it touches or gets close to because this is your output this is what goes to the points um, this can be repaired and it can be repaired uh, rather effectively just by using a couple pieces of shrink tube put the first piece on heat it up shrink it down put a second piece on over top of that heat it up shrink it down it gives you real good insulation against that so you can reuse that coil even if you have uh, some mice chew marks same thing with your uh, cable the cable is not removable it's epoxied in your spark plug cable um, you can actually splice spark plug cables together and have them work effectively as well using pretty much the same technique uh, as explained and what I usually do is take a piece of solid copper core wire at the breech I'll cut I'll insert the copper wire into one side into the carbon filament I'll put it into the other side in carbon filament. Some of these have carbon filaments and some of them have wire filaments. The wire filaments they're a lot easier to uh, splice but that is uh, one of the problems that happens with these engines that have sat for a long time. You can also see here on the coil itself. Now this is a bad coil where the epoxy on the outside of the coil windings has been chewed through by the mice and there's actually I don't know how well you can see it a tiny little bit of wire showing through there so obviously bad coil uh, I said earlier about uh, the difference in the height the spacing because it's got to meet up with that flywheel just right uh, with the earlier 23D's the taper on the cone that the flywheel mounted to was pretty steep and uh, its location was totally different using the 23D coil than it was with the later models even just one year later when they went to uh, the 10 horse engines um, what you had for a mounting plate for the 23D was a real shallow just stamped steel piece that mounted to the block using these bolts and then your coil mounted to that with four pins or four screws All right well they did away with the four screws and went down to two screws on the later models one two and they are slotted and that allows you for your adjustment to get it to uh, gap right against your flywheel and what they went to was this much taller bracket okay um, this taller bracket moved the coil out with the new design on the crankshaft taper and the keyway in the crankshaft instead of having a little tab like the 23D's do so that you can mount your coil and have it spaced out far enough so that it would come in proper contact with the magnet so uh, this was also uh, I think I already said a points operated coil points open through the spark here's your positive wire that would go to your points and then your negative is right there so actually this one oriented this way with the wires facing out and to the left both wires to the left so bad coil but uh, it just gives you a general visual and general idea of uh, how everything worked so there's that now we're going to jump on into the magnetron now there are kits out there uh, where you can buy a magnetron magneto a magnetron type coil um, and I explain there's an extra little button there's that extra little button right there and what this does it replaces 
this and it also eliminates the need for points so you can take this coil that has gone bad chewed up by mice and either install a Nova 2 spark eliminator or uh, points eliminator and reinstall the standard type coil M magneto or you could upgrade to the magnetron now in the earlier days and I'm not talking that many years ago but early on with the magnetron style you had to take your flywheel off send your flywheel to brakes to have it repolarized the north-south had to be reversed so that as the magnets came around they would initiate opening of the quote-unquote points replacement that's in this unit and allow you to throw a spark with, without the need of points uh, that's the whole purpose of the magnetron that's what the magnetron's job was it would come in and throw your spark for you without having to have the points um, something else to pay attention to with these laminations um, sometimes you'll get some condensation or some rust and you'll find that your laminations are uh, somewhat separating you can see here I can just pull these they're really really thin okay you can wire brush this uh, you can clean them out blow them out and then once you compress everything back together when you bolt it in place a lot of times as long as they go together well you're still gonna have good spark if they're mushroomed out like this far get another get another mag magnetron or coil or magneto um, this one ha just has a plug that goes from here uh, for your ground to kill the uh, kill the motor it says right here on this cylinder side so it would mount that way and it says this side out right on the magnetron that puts your button to the left which as your flywheel comes around clockwise that's where it's hitting in order to open that circuit up so as just a general uh, explanation of the different types of Briggs coils uh, that have been run from the mid 1960s well, I, I guess we can go almost early because it's 1963 to start uh, to uh, the full on magnetron ignitions now one step further they have started designing a magnetron that you do not need to send your flywheel in and have repolarized those are they're great you can eliminate your points take your points out altogether take your points plunger out plug your ports put your cap back on and just not worry about things at all uh, not have to worry about adjusting your points anymore um, which is great you know if, if you're wanting to go solid state this is the way to go just make sure with your manufacturer that uh, when you send your numbers in to get your magnetron that you're getting a magnetron that will not require you to have your flywheel repolarized and that just about sums it up I just wanted to give a quick little generic explanation and uh, do a little visual on uh, the differences I mean you know you can look at these two and you know for all practical intents and purposes they they look identical uh, except for the presence of that button and this extra boss on the coil which has you know, a little bit a little bit more involved underneath the uh, plastic and epoxy so there you have today's video from Zippo on coils magnetos and magnetrons I uh, hope it sheds a little bit of light to some people and helps them understand the importance of always having the numbers off of your engine your model type and code ready whenever you're looking for a part uh, if you're on a social network uh, or you know on YouTube asking for help you're calling a dealer asking for help always have those numbers uh, it's just like you know uh, needing fuel injectors for 2.8 liter in an old Chevy Cavalier well you're not going to walk in and just say I need a fuel injector what for well it's for a car well what kind of car oh oh it's a Chevy or something no you gotta have exactly what you are wanting to put your part in so be sure to have your numbers if you don't have your numbers um, 
there are people, uh, myself included to a certain extent, that can help identify your motor and get you close to getting the right parts. But having those numbers are very important. And I do have a video up posted of where to look on your Briggs engine, various different spots that they put the identification numbers or identification tag that has the model type and codes on it that will help us help you. So if anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you want to add to it, uh, you want to correct me on something if I'm if I'm off on something, uh, please feel free leave a comment. Uh, if, if you're new to seeing my videos, please subscribe and like and look for more videos to come. This is Zippo. Later. I'm out.